what was meant to be an afternoon walk with the host family's dog out in the jungles of the Panama ended up in tragedy that no one to this day knows what happened, exactly how it happened, or when it happened. All we know is that the evidence shows that something very dark, very disturbing, and very scary happened to these two girls. Today we're going to be talking about the mysterious deaths of Chris Creamers and Lisanne Froon. Chris and Lisanne were students from the Netherlands visiting Panama. What they had wanted to do is to make this trip like a vacation as well as a service trip. They were staying with a host family and they were planning on doing some service work in that area with some of the local children. Part of the trip that they were on included backpacking around the Panamanian jungle. So April 1st, 2014, the girls decide that they're going to take their host family's dog uh, out for a walk through the jungle. But this was the last time that anybody would ever see them alive again. This all began to unravel later that night when the host family's dog returned back home. Now the dog wasn't hurt, the dog was fine, but he didn't have the girls with him. Now the family decided to search the surrounding area. They looked all around, but they didn't find anything. And the following morning, they contacted authorities. Now nothing was turning up in the searches for them. And by April 6th, the girls' families were on planes with detectives headed down to this area. But again, the searches continued to turn up nothing and weeks ended up going by with nothing. Finally though, a woman turns in a backpack that she found along the riverbanks. Inside the backpack, there was money, there was personal belongings, Froon's passport was even in there. They also found a camera, and they also found both of the girls' phones in there as well. Now the story that those phones and that camera would tell is what nightmares are made out of. Apparently it seemed that the phones had continued to work for like 10 days after the girls went missing. There had been 77 attempts to reach the police from the phones. The first attempts were made just hours after they went hiking. But of all those attempts, because of the density of the jungle, none of those calls ever went through. One of them apparently did go through, but literally for like two seconds, and then it was dropped. Now on April 6th, while her parents and detectives were on their way down there to search for their daughters, several attempts were made to get into the phones using the wrong PIN number. Now after that, sadly, the phones would eventually go dead. Next, they looked into the cameras, and what they found is nothing that a parent should have to see. It's really nothing that anyone should have to see when they're searching for someone but it did give them some answers. The first photos were normal photos, photos you'd expect to see of two young ladies hanging out, enjoying life, getting ready to go for a walk and just spending time together and laughing. However, the next photos, they were taken later at night and they told a vastly different story. All the photos really showed was the girl's belongings and it was all spread out on rocks. And one even showed the back of Chris's bloody head. Now the police searched the area where the backpack was found. They did find Chris's clothing and oddly it was neatly folded along the river's edge. Now later on in that same area, a pelvic bone would be found as well as one of their shoes that still had a foot in it. Not too long after that, the girls' bodies would be found, at least what was left of them. Investigators would say that one set of bones looked like normal decomposition had taken place. They said that the other bones, however, they didn't look like they had gone through anything natural. In fact, they said that the bones looked like someone had taken the time to bleach them. Now, all that being said, they couldn't even determine how the girls died. They could only try to piece together the grisly story that the pictures told the desperate cries for help that the phone told about. But no one knows what happened to them, who did it to them, what did it to them, or any of the nightmares that they endured those days while they were still alive out there in the jungle. And to this day, nothing has ever come of the case. It's still unsolved. Now, if you want to hear more of my stories or hear me talk about other true crime cases, just click on the videos that are coming up. I appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you soon.